Hey guys, so we're continuing with our Regents Review short answer questions in this video. Uh, so it says, base your answers to questions 8 through 10 on the diagram below and on your knowledge of earth science. The diagram represents a laboratory setup that is used to analyze the different sizes of sand in a 100 gram sample of beach sand. The laboratory setup consists of a column containing a series of screens. The size of each screen opening and the size of sand stopped by each screen are labeled. The beach sand was poured on the top of the column, which was then shaken from side to side to sort the sand. The total mass in grams of each size of sand stopped by the screen at that level is indicated above each screen. So what it's saying is they have a sample of beach sand and beach sand is made up of many different types of sand which, with different shapes and sizes. And they have this column with different screens and each screen will let through uh, different sizes of sand. So they're sorting the sand, meaning they're grouping the sand in um, uh, size and shape, sorting, right? Uh, by pouring the beach sand on the top and the, as the sand is going through these um uh, what are these called screens um they're being separated or sorted by their size and shape and notice that the very coarse sand coarse means larger particles of sand are stuck in the top parts and uh, as we go lower we're getting finer sand meaning smaller grains of sand so the smaller grains of sands are going through and uh, stopping here and then the larger grains of sand are getting stuck here and we're separating them by size now by doing this Number eight, on the graph in your answer booklet, construct a bar graph that shows the mass of each size of sand listed inside the column. Notice that it's giving me the mass and it's giving me the different sizes of sand. And I'm given, I'm asked to create a, a bar graph. So what I'm gonna do, I have already have labeled very coarse sand, coarse sand, medium sand, fine sand, and very fine sand. These are my sand uh, types of sand. And then for my y-axis, I have the mass of sand, which is given to me. Um, and all I have to do is shade in the, for each type of sand, the mass of each sand. So for very coarse sand, I have 16 grams. So I'm gonna shade and create a bar of 16. Um, and so each line is two grams. So 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, and so on. Coarse sand is 14 grams, so I'm going to shade up to 14. Medium sand is 25 grams, so I'm going to shade up to 25. Fine sand is 38, so I'm going to shade up to 38. And then finally, very fine sand is 7 grams, so I'm going to shade up to 7. And my bar graph should look something like this. So all of your five bars should be within or they should touch the clear rectangles on the top in the space below. Next, number nine, the various sand samples separated by the screens were tested to determine capillarity. On the graph in your answer booklet, draw a line to show the general relationship between the size of the sand and capillarity. So your graph should look like one of these graphs. So as you're going from very fine to very coarse sand, meaning your size of the sand is increasing, your capillarity, to, capillarity should go down. You can either do a straight line or a curved line. So remember, if you go down your Regents Review Packet page 9, capillarity or water retention is the ability of water to rise through soil, and it's affected by particle size. So the smaller your sediments, the higher your capillarity will be. So that's why if you have very small grains of sand, uh, and if you have some water, that sand will lift up the water because it's smaller compared to a larger larger grains of sand. And that's why as your, your sand size is getting more large or coarse, your capillarity is decreasing. The finer your sand, the smaller your sediments, the higher your capillarity. Um, and if you go on your reference table, page six, if they were did not give you the sizes of each type of sand or particle, you can always find it on page six. Clay sizes over here, silt sizes are here, sand sizes are here. So you can find the sizes of different types of particles. Next, 10. Identify the minimum stream velocity in centimeters per second needed to maintain movement of a sand particle with a diameter of 0 0.1 centimeter. So you can get credit if you have a value or write down a value between 5 centimeters per second to 6 centimeters per second. And you'll find this anytime you hear stream velocity or see the word stream velocity, you should go on your reference table, page 6, and it's saying that my particle diameter is around 0 0.1 centimeters and I'm asked for the minimum stream velocity. The particle diameter is on the y-axis here's 0 0.1 i go sideways i stop at the black line i go down my minimum stream velocity should be somewhere around five to six centimeters per second 
that's it for now